Chapter 15 I reached the bottom of the stairs and turned on my pen light. It was stuffy and hot in the small chamber. A heavy metal door sat three feet in front of me. A shiny silver plate was on the wall next to the door. The specs said it was a heat and pressure sensor. Putting your hand on it and pressing it activated the heat scanner. A typical human being's heat signature would open the door. I was breathing hard as I put my hand on the sensor and pushed. Nothing happened. I licked my lips and pushed again. The plate moved a little. I heard little clicks, whirs, then silence. Come on, I said. Come on, please. More silence. I pressed against the plate. I shoved and I waited and I pressed again. Please, I whispered. Still nothing. I collapsed against the door and it sprang open under my weight. I spilled into a dark room, tripping on something near the entrance. Searing intense lights came on and I winced. Then I heard air blowers churn like growling beasts. I laughed and picked myself up as I looked around. The room was just like in the specs. An underground bunker. White walls, floors, ceilings, counters and chairs. A couple of workstations, clipboards, lockers everywhere I looked. I heard movement from above and closed the door behind me. The same tiny click sounded. I was safe. I sat down in one of the chairs, still laughing. I saw a stack of papers and hurled them into the air as I screamed with relief. They came floating down, a few whipping around as the cold air from the vents caught them. I did it. I did it! I couldn't calm down. I got up and started going through some of the lockers. I found canned food, supplies of fresh water, stacks of technical manuals, clean clothes. There were other lockers, but I stopped. Something hit me. I looked around. Okay, so where was the communications equipment? I saw the workstation where the radio should have been, but it was empty. The computers weren't there either. That was weird. I found electrical plugs and phone and coaxial jacks. I went through the lockers again. Two pretty big ones at the end were locked. I relaxed. Sure, they'd keep equipment that could get damaged by dust or dirt or heat or whatever wrapped in plastic or something. I found tools and broke open the first locker. Inside, I found a pair of stun weapons fully charged, boxes of some sort of anti-dinosaur tear gas canisters, and some jackets and pants that were heavily padded. A recharger for the stun weapon sat on the bottom of the lockers, a rectangular gray unit with little plugs and wires. This would be great if I was going to war, but I wasn't. I was going to send word and the rescuers were going to come. I was going to see my mom again, my dad, my friends. I was going home. It took a lot longer to pry open the second locker. When I finally did, I stared at what was inside for a long time. The shelves were empty. It just wasn't possible. I went through all the lockers again. I hunted around the floor for more storage space like I had found in the rec room. Nothing. I picked up the clipboard I had ignored before. The paper attached was a construction schedule. The last entry read, Final Appropriations Meeting, 9 a.m. Monday. Computers and communications equipment to be moved in on Tuesday. Test run scheduled for Friday. Safe house should be fully operational in one week. The log wasn't finished. Whoever wrote the note never came back. The safe house wasn't completed. There was no way to call for help. I sat staring at the progress log for what felt like a long time. The idea of the safe house had given me hope and kept me going. Now, I went crazy. I don't know how else to describe it. I kicked lockers, I threw everything that wasn't bolted down, I broke a couple of the overhead lights, I screamed until my throat was raw. I kept on like that until the fight went out of me and I was lying on the floor, curled up, wondering why they'd given up on me, why no one would help me. After a while, I got off the floor. Ben didn't leave me because he had wanted to, and I knew my parents wouldn't give up on me. Not ever. There's always a way. My dad had said that. Come to think of it, so had Ben. I looked around again. The recharging unit for the stunner was a portable generator. I remembered the radio I'd found at the compound. If I could wait out what was happening above and get this unit out of here and back to the compound... Suddenly, the lights started flickering. The air shut off. I ran to the door and slammed my hand against the pad on my side. I waited for the clicks. This time, the only thing that came was darkness.